number one with my husband, but then also with my sister. You know, trying to warm them up isn't always in their favor. Good morning. So I'm working on what we need to be doing this week. We've got a fair amount going on, but just more complicated. So I'm trying something a little bit different when it comes to like scheduling and kind of keeping track of things, mainly because I love, don't get me wrong, I love paper planners, but those get difficult to rearrange things and plan further ahead and just drag and drop. So I'm going to show you a clip or a screenshot of my Google Calendar from my phone. So I might have to add it to the video. Something that's been awesome is for one with my husband, but then also with my sister for getting the dates when I watch her daughter. You can like add people to calendars so they can edit it and you can edit it as well. So that has been like game changer when it comes to keeping track of things from other people and not having to go like, well, when was this? When was that? And it just shows up on all y'all's phones. And it has been a huge help um, because her days change when I watch Candace and just things like that. So that's been really helpful because, um, you know, even there's very little that can stay consistent 100% of the time as long if, unless you have nobody else in your life. <laughs> um, so, you know, just having things down to where you can see things really will help keep the the crazy <laughs> um, or keep you from just feeling so frazzled. That's how you're able to manage a lot is keeping it out of here and on a place that you can manage it and see it and readjust if things need to change. Even throughout the very last minute of the day, things can change. As we all know, kids, animals, spouses, all the things can have an effect <laughs> on changing things. <laughs> so, I'm going to, I'm trying this new, just using Google Calendar instead of a planner. I'm still handwriting the things that are like to do's in a smaller planner and just going from there to see how well that'll work on the daily, at least. Because I've got multiple planners for the rabbitry and all those things. We're not going to go there <laughs> for now. But anyways, we're going to try that out. All right, let's see if we can make it, or I can make it down to the coop without killing myself. Um, <laughs> I am, we're just letting the chickens out in the morning. Um, and I've moved feeding to the evening because, whoop, the snow is very slick. Um, because we have to close them up anyways. And so I might as well close the door and close them up at the same time. I have been nice and feeding, been feeding them inside the coop, and no one is interested in coming out. Like, why should they? <laughs> no one interested in coming out? No. Like, why should you, right? <laughs> yeah. So we have a workers' banquet tonight at church, which we have to get ready for and probably leave around 6 o'clock. But I'm hoping the chickens will cooperate to either go back in the coop by then or um, just, not, just not come out because that way I can keep them closed up. Um, we have the door, like you saw on the automatic like, pull thing. Um, and so we just didn't have having trouble either one with coyotes that are showing up more or foxes are starting to become rather, um, what's the word? Plenteous, populated, something along those lines. So I'm hoping I can get feeding done before then, like feed the rabbits before then and close them up because they've got food extra in there. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we can get that done. I need to get, today is blog post day, so I need to get on writing two of those. I am caught up to two months ahead, but I want to kind of keep it that way so that as summer projects come and things like that, that I can hopefully, you know, not take a few weeks off or just um, 
take it a little bit easier and not have to stress so much. After taking all the Christmas decorations down, I kind of like didn't want it to feel empty. So I redid it a little bit. And I think this is pretty a pretty darn good transition into not yet spring, but you know, keeping the mantle looking cool for the winter. Also, here's another trick. Um, for one, this is a propane fireplace. And so all the fireplaces tend to have a fume that comes out. Um, and obviously you don't really need to open this, but keeping a candle close by that you can burn really gets rid of the fumes that um, are put off and it's not nearly as bad. So that's just something to, to try the next time if you have some kind of gas burning fireplace. Excuse me, sir. Are you looking at neighbors? The one neighbor that we do have to bark at? He's like, yes, this is my job. <laughs> Oh, there's a truck over in John Deere. I'm waiting for my coffee to warm up, but I had a question for all y'all who have had dogs that have gotten old. <laughs> Toby is the oldest dog I've ever lived with because the dogs as kids, one was either, you know, aggression issues, one ate socks. Um, another one I had to put down because she bit someone. We will not keep biting dogs. <laughs> um, anyway, so like they were all died. Either one had seizures too. They all died prematurely for things that, like, we didn't really have any control over. Um, and so, but this, Toby's about, he's going to be 10 in two months. And I swear he's like a crotchety old man. <laughs> oh my goodness. So he, um, like, his demanding level has gone through the roof. He knows how to make a nuisance out of himself. Um, he just, he wants to just go outside and walk back in for no reason. Like, for one, and well, and two, he is starting to get into, just tear up stuff for fun. Like, he never did that before. He's, he's getting crotchety old dog habits. I don't know what the deal is. But, is this normal? Did he, well, he's a St. Bernard, let me tell you that too. Because that breed has some opinions and are slightly stubborn by quite a bit. Little, little critter. How did you end up in my salad? It is also lovely and snowing once again. <laughs> it's really not as bad as you might think. They are, the rabbits are doing well. The, I've got the tarps over top. There's a lot of like padding and stuff around. And you can touch their ears and feel like that's your, their thermometer. Um, and so if they're not feeling cold, they're doing okay. And especially like a lot of them, they're big enough that they're still not, um, they're not shivering or anything. They're laying out even. So you know that they're doing okay. Not that I would recommend this all the time, but because it's cold right now, I kind of have this over here in the corner for my own sanity, but they haven't left the coop at all today. But why would they, right? The other thing you have to remember when, you know, when it's cold and things like that, and, you know, we can feel a little bit guilty <laughs> sometimes. Um, but a lot of it is just that they, we think of it as how we feel outside. But honestly, hold on. <laughs> um, you know, it's, we weren't designed to be living outside, but animals were. You have to remember that, yes, maybe you don't feel awesome, but, like, they are getting used to it too. And also by not, um, you know, by, for one, if you freak out too much and put them in somewhere warmer, on the cold days and then you know something like that where then their bodies go oh it's getting warmer but then really winter's not over yet so you're not doing them any favors by trying to warm them up consist like for a really bad snap but then you put them back out and leave them out when it's 30 degrees but you just put them in where it was 50 degrees or something like that do you see what i'm saying to where you know trying to warm them up isn't always in their favor